everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Finance on Your Terms with Mike and Danny. Uh, today we're going to continue our theme of financial words you should know with the B word. Ooh, I like this one. I like that one a lot. Well, like a lot of B words. Like but a this lot one, of B words. This one actually, it might rub some people the wrong way. It's going to, I think. Um, today's word, like Danny said, the B word, budget. Budgets. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, we hate talking about this. And I know in a couple previous series, we've mentioned budgets and the importance of having a budget but not overcomplicating it. Yep. Today, we want to prove that to you by saying whatever your level of comfort is yep. with a budget, having one is important, but you don't have to make it super hard, super difficult, super complicated. There's a couple different ways that we can look at it. On one end of the spectrum, okay, piece of paper, pencil, yeah. Pen? Pen? Pencil, maybe? I don't maybe. know, with eraser? Yeah. So one of the things as we're giving a presentation about financial literacy that we challenge people to do is when was the last time you marked down every single dollar that you spent? So even if it just means keeping a little notepad or a piece of paper in your wallet, wrap it around that debit card, wrap it around that credit card so that every time you bring that card out to swipe or to insert with the chip now, yep. you write down exactly the dollar amount that you're spending and what you spent it on. That is the simple side of budgeting. Just try that for a week or two, and you might be surprised where your money's going. And really, that's what budgeting is all about, mm -hmm. is finding those trends. It doesn't make any, it's not going to help me if I'm looking at yesterday, and yesterday, well, there was a special dollar amount because I had to spend money on this, and I'm not looking again next month to see if that stayed the same, if that increased, decreased for that category of expenses. So the idea is finding trends of where, in general, your money's going, and does that align with what your financial goals are? So that's the simple side of things. Yeah, and the, the more complex side, there's a ton of different apps out there. Mint.com, there's some that I've heard of. Uh, you can do a Google search, it'll pull things up. Yeah. But I almost guarantee if you have a credit card, if you have a debit card and you're, and you're on with a bank, go in and just see if they have a budget tool on there already. Uh, I've seen multiple credit cards, including ones that I have, that literally will go through and say, hey, last month you spent 40% of your purchases on yeah. eating out. You spent 20% on an auto parts, or you put, spent the other 30% on groceries. Uh, it'll, it'll literally break it down for you yeah. line by line, show you where your money's going. So if you don't want to have that piece of paper in your pocket, if you don't have that discipline, me, I don't, um, it'll track it for you. The, the middle ground where I typically like to go is I will go back after a month of spending, I'll look line by line, see where I've spent my money, and I have an Excel sheet that I use. So not full on app, not a piece of paper, I'm somewhere in the middle, but it helps me realize, okay, I ate out four nights um, a week last month, I probably should cut that down, I can cook at home a little bit more often. Yeah. Well, and again, the, the idea here is when working with an Excel or even mint.com, you've got to train it a little bit. So learning how to categorize your expenses, and usually that work comes primarily up front. Once you kind of have all those categories in place, then you're just looking month to month and being able to slot them in already uh, in those pre-made uh, pre categories. But that is the most important. So you can look through and say, all right, clothing, we spent this much. Eating out, we spent this much. And then how is that changing from month to month? Mint.com is great because you can have all kinds of charts and graphs, and they can even send you alerts, whether it's on your computer or your phone, whatever it is. But none of these methods is better than one or another. It's what works for you. It, what works for you, what's most comfortable for you. Either way, tracking your money as painful as it may be is the key to setting up that great financial foundation going forward and figuring out where you can find a few extra dollars here and there to be able to save towards retirement or other goals that you may have. And really with the B word, with the budget, the end goal month over month is simply to spend less than you make. Yep. If you're doing that, we can almost guarantee you're going to have a successful financial career. Yeah, absolutely. All right, everybody. That's the B word for today in financial words you should know. Stu stay, tuned. stay tuned next week for another financial word. Um, continue to share these videos and let us know what you'd like to hear. And we will talk to you next week. Thanks, everybody.